Right, hello and welcome to part two of my Microsoft Excel integration video. What I'm going to do in this video is show you some of the more advanced things that you can do and, and how to interact with our Excel add-in to get the, the most out of it. So what we had last time was we were looking at some humidity, uh, weather humidity data points and we had got to the point where we got a table for, our, for, for the current month so from the 1st of October to the 20th of October and we've got some data points here that we can use for charting or whatever. So first of all, let me show you a few nuances about what you can do here. You can, um, you can change between hourly aggregates and daily aggregates, but you also, and let me just reduce the, the time window a little bit here so to two days, right? So we can start off with daily aggregates. Uh, hopefully I'll get to two rows here for uh, two days worth of, of data. Uh, now I can get more detail by switching into my hourly aggregates, right? So we're going to get hourly, hourly values for the last two days. Now I can use these statistic samples here to say, you know what, I don't want to look at, I want to compare not just the average, but also the minimum and maximum. So this, you know, this depends on the data that you're after. And this uh, basically works on a per tag, per data point basis. So now I'll get minimum, maximum and average for uh, all four of my data samples here. The final mode that um, you need to know about is the raw data mode. And in this mode, there is no pre-calculation or pre-aggregation. Pre you basically get all the raw samples in the database, right? So if you're collecting data every second, that's what you'll get. And uh, this will be very useful for you if you're trying to do some very advanced, very advanced analysis or very advanced algorithms. So, okay, so that's that. Let me switch back into, into daily mode and let's get Let's go back to where we were. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is that the configuration here is, is quite flexible, right? There, there's kind of this interaction between this panel and the cells, but these are fundamentally raw cells. And what we're saying here is that for your time period, I want you to source the start time from this cell and the end time from this cell. But we can change that. We can tell uh, Excel to, you know, source the end time from here instead. Go like this. So I click there. And now what I've told my, my data panel is I want you to source the end timestamp from cell B2, right? So I've modified how I want it to work. Okay. I, I have the same option here. I can extend the, the area where it's looking for, for um, data points to something different. And, you know, what we're looking for is the fully qualified name here. So for, the, for these tags here, we're looking at the, the fully qualified name. Uh, if you want to return something else, you easily can. What, what you do is you go to the data panel and you expand the, the details here and, and, and the name of the tag is basically the data source and the name. So you get weather plus Detroit.humidity. So we can easily do that. We go weather Detroit humidity, okay. So now we get five tags identified. Uh, okay, uh, one other thing that I can do is I can instruct my panel to put the results somewhere else. You know, let's create a separate worksheet for results, for the data. So we're going to have a, a, a sheet just for the data. I'm going to tell my panel, put the results from data cell A1. And now if we run that query, what I'm hoping to get here is two days worth, five cities, average values, one, two, three, four, five. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, one other thing that uh, you'll probably want to do is to employ some of the, the Excel scripting and programming capabilities. So for example, for the end time, Let's use the now formula to make sure that this report always ends up with the latest available data. And for the start time, let's give it two months into the past. So we say use the e-date formula. e-date B2 minus two months. Okay, 
So now we're saying from the now, subtract two months, and use that as a fixed definition for my data. And if we refresh our data again, what I'm expecting to get now is roughly two months worth of um, daily aggregates, daily averages for five cities. So let's just give it a let's just give it a moment for it to uh, to come back. And uh, here we go from the 20th of August through to 20th of October. So. Now what you're doing is, you know, I'm showing you basically how you can start to, to build up some more advanced reports. You know, you can have multiple multiple sheets. You can, you can use scripting to select what uh, data you're going to return or what time frame and uh, how to post-process the, the data with your own statistics, obviously. So... Uh, that's it. I think that's uh, probably uh, enough for this video. It gives you a, a bit of an insight into how you can start interacting with the add-in and, and get uh, get more value out of it. So thank you for thank you for today, and we'll see you soon in, in another video.